Now my biggest worry was getting my new piece of fuel hose over this huge connector here. I was really concerned, but I used a bit of boiling water and lucky enough, the new piece of pipe slid straight over this nipple. And now I'm over that stress of this repair, I thought I'd start making this video. So let me begin by telling you a little bit of a story why Mary is once again all in pieces. Now it all started last night, I was given two choices, whether to go and see my friend in Essex or whether to go and see my mate Dave down the road. Lucky for me, Dave enticed me with a picture of himself holding these two great big steaks and he said, hey mate, because the barbecue's on, come on down and have a beer. And that kind of sealed the deal for me, so I decided to go and see me mate Aussie Dave, rather than go through Dartford Tunnel and see my mate in Billericay. <laughs> Boy, am I glad I made that choice, because when I got to Dave's yard, I could smell this diesel, and sure enough, there was diesel pouring out from underneath my van, and it was gushing out. I thought I'd actually popped a radiator or something. It was that much diesel coming out. And the reason I lost so much diesel so quickly was because of this piece of pipe. Take a look at that. It is absolutely perished. And this piece of pipe was the main pipe coming out of my fuel pump into my fuel rail. So this was high pressure hose that had split, hence the amount of diesel that was gushing out. And it really was gushing, let me tell you. <laughs> Cannot believe my luck. If I chose to go to Essex, this could have happened going through Dartford Tunnel. So I've got to say massive thank you to my mate Aussie Dave for enticing me with those steaks. <laughs> really appreciate it. But unfortunately we didn't get to enjoy those steaks because of this piece of pipe splitting. By the time I'd cut this, rejoined it and got my van back on the road, it started to get dark and it was actually starting to rain a little bit. So we decided to save the steak for later on today once I'd fixed Mary. So the quicker I get this fixed, the quicker I can get down, see my mate Aussie Dave and enjoy those lovely steaks. The moral of this story is if you've got an old van such as my old Sprinter, check your fuel lines. Check them for any splits or signs of deterioration. And I am as guilty as the next man for this because I did actually know that one of my fuel lines was slightly deteriorated. Let me show you this. It's starting to rub and wear. And this is a job I had in my list of things to do. Never quite got round to doing them. <laughs> So it's my own fault, really. I should have changed these pipes long ago. Let me point the camera down, I'll show you what I mean. So here you go, look at that. You can see where the pipe's been rubbing on something and it's actually starting to wear away. And also the underside here, just there, look, it's rubbing against the manifold. I should have taken care of this as soon as I noticed it, so it's my own fault. I should have changed this pipe and all the other pipes as well. So that's what I'm gonna to do today before I go and see me mate Dave and have enjoy those steaks, I'm gonna change all these pipes. But like I say, my biggest worry was getting this one over this fitting because it is quite a large fitting. And I was really concerned I wouldn't be able to do it. So before taking this pipe completely off, I removed it and made sure I could get that pipe over there. As you can see, it's quite stretched, but again, look how perished it is. So this is well overdue a change. <laughs> well overdue. I should have done this last year or in the winter even. And another thing I've noticed is this whole assembly has come loose. Look at it. I mean, it's the whole bracket that holds all these pipes together has actually come away from the manifold as well. So that's something else I've got to take care of. But here's the strange thing. If I try and put this in place where it should be screwed in, this pipe has really gone tight, this lower one. So maybe I need to replace this pipe as well. In fact, I think I'm actually going to change this pipe. What do you think? Do you think it's worth risking taking that off and changing this pipe? Maybe. Maybe it is. But nevertheless, I really need to secure this back down into place. Very strange that that's come loose like that. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do one pipe at a time. Take my time. Make sure it's done properly and make sure none of those pipes are stressed. I brought two metres of this 8 mil fuel pipe should be plenty to replace all the fuel lines underneath the bonnet of my van. Now the original fuel pipe was covered in this protective sleeve. What I'm going to do is cut this sleeve in half, use half of it up this end where the pipe could potentially rub against this electrical connector and then the other half down this end where the pipe could potentially rub against the oil filter. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Just cut this in half. I 
like that. It's a shame I haven't got any more of this because that would be even better. One piece up there like that, where it comes around there, and the other piece can protect it from rubbing against the fuel filter, or the oil filter. Yeah, that would be perfect like that. Now always remember, if you're using fuel line, to use proper fuel clamps. These aren't just regular Jubilee clamps, you can see they actually clamp the pipe all the way around. These are brilliant, these clamps. Much better than the regular Jubilee clamps. Make sure you get it the right way round as well, where you can get to it. <laughs> I've done that before. Right, let's get this on. I'm getting hungry. So this is the new pipe in place. As you can see, this protective sleeve worked out really well. It's protecting this pipe from rubbing against this or rubbing against there. And this part of the protective sleeve is stopping it from rubbing against the oil filter. So I'm really pleased with that. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead, change this line, change this short piece here as well, and then we'll be good to go. Well, I ended up changing three fuel lines in the end. The ones that come in and out of the fuel pump, I changed those, after it was one of them that burst. And also the little stubby one that was on the top of the fuel filter down here. Boy, am I glad I changed this one. <laughs> because it was quite tight, and that's the reason I changed it. And as you can see, it is really perished. You can see it's all cracking there if I hold it like that. So once again, I'd say to anybody out there that's got an old Sprinter, or any old van for that matter, or vehicle, make sure you check your fuel lines and if you can't check it yourself then when you take your van to a mechanic for it to be serviced then ask him to quickly check your fuel lines as well just make sure those fuel lines aren't cracked and perished like mine you could save yourself one big headache right all i've got to do now is put the air box back on crank it up and make sure i've got no leaks and once i've done that i'm going to head down to my mate dave and enjoy that steak now the reason I have to put the air box on is because of these electronics. If I was to start up Mary without plugging these back on, I'd get an engine management light come up. We don't want that. Well, I'm not going to secure it down properly. Maybe I will, because it's going to rattle. <laughs> That's it. Well, I won't do that up. I'll just leave that like that. Start it up, see what happens. Well, I'm happy to report there are no more leaks. So uh, that's me done for the day. I've just got to tidy up, change my clothes, get down to me mate, Aussie Dave's, have a bath and a barbecue. I'll see you there. Welcome to my friend Dave's yard. Dave does house clearances. He also does rubbish clearance as well. And occasionally he likes to keep some of the stuff he comes across and he keeps it in this yard. And that's pretty much what Dave does for a living. This yard is it's kind of like a salvage recycling centre. We have all sorts of stuff here. This is his van that he's currently converting into a camper van with a tiny little bit of help from me. Not much, I must admit. <laughs> Shaking his head because, uh, yeah, I haven't really helped him at all. <laughs> Giving him a little bit of advice now and again. But anyway, recently Dave did a house clearance and there were these koi ponds in the garden. So I said, yeah, Dave, you still got those koi ponds in that you've cleared from that house? He said, yeah, I have. I've got one anyway. So this is my bath for the night. And look at the view. <laughs> I love this guy. Right, I'm going to get undressed, get in the bathtub. Dave's going to serve me steak in the bath. Yeah, I don't think you're getting undressed totally, mate. That ain't happening. <laughs> I've got my trunks on. Yeah, that's what I was on about. I've got that's my towel. Right. I've got my pantene. Now, I do need my little beaker. 
this one will do. When I bathe myself. Look at the view. This is, by the way, is the River Medway, in case any of you don't know where I am. Um, it's pretty much a long river that runs through the Medway towns and also through Maidstone and beyond it's through the heart of Kent. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Where's mine then? I've got a bigger. That's for washing your hair, isn't it? Yes, yeah, for washing my hair. You're going to wash your hair later. Eh? Hey? You're going to wash yours later. Oh, yeah, bath yesterday. Oh, you had a bath yeah, yesterday. It's been a really hot day, hence the idea of having this bathtub. Right. I'm going to stop waffling on, get in the tub. Oh, oh, you. That is nice. I'm so dirty. I don't care it's cold. I don't care it's taking my breath away. That is nice. Oh, pardon me. And what a view! I've got the sun on me, I'm laying in a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs>